content creators and influencers in the era of Web 3.0. Is there room for them in the metaverse and an open social marketplace for creators? The co-founder of Galaxy joins us in an exclusive interview. Coming up on Word on the Blog, from Wall Street to the streets of the metaverse, Solo Cisse, COO of Galaxy, joins in to dig deep into those stories and a whole lot more. How is Web 3.0 shaping the creator economy? Does social media need blockchain? And how will it carry over to the metaverse? It's the intersection of sports, culture, and media. Spencer Dinwiddie and his co-founder, Solo Cisse, founded Galaxy to speak and support a new generation of influencers and creators. Welcome to Word on the Block, the series that takes a deeper dive into blockchain and the emerging technologies that shape our world at the intersection of business, politics, and economy. It's what we cover right here on Forecast News. I'm Editor-in-Chief Angie Lau. Welcome, Solo Cisse, COO and co-founder of Galaxy, joining us today to talk about how economy of content and talent is changing by the second. Solo, it is so great to have you here exclusively with us. Appreciate you for having me. I'm really excited about this one. All right. Okay. First, what is Galaxy? That is a great question. So what is Galaxy? So Galaxy formally is known as the open social marketplace. Um, but what does that mean, right? And so what we aim to be is the one-stop shop for creators to monetize and connect with their communities. So, you know, through the use of Web 3.0 and those tools, um, we're introducing community building tools in more efficient ways to create direct to consumer relationships between creators and their fans. And so we've introduced the concept of social tokens. Um, that's something a little bit less discussed when it comes to the creator economy um, and when it comes to tokenization of likeness. You know, you're very, very you know, keen and aware of what's going on in the NFT market. And so we also have introduced those concepts, but through those two, community building tools, as we like to call them. Um, fans are able to engage in services um, and engagements that are familiar to what they do currently in the Web2 world. So you understand the things like subscription content, um, you know, social media engagements like video calls and video messages. All of those engagements can happen within our application that was built, um, but the access point to those things are through social tokens, um, which is a creator's uh, cryptocurrency native to them. So somebody like a Spencer would have a Spencer Dinwiddie coin, or somebody like a Tiana Taylor would have a Tiana Taylor token. Um, and her fans purchase these tokens to unlock these engagements on the other side, as well as purchase their NFTs. And so it's really that very necessary layer um, and ecosystem that doesn't exist um, within the Web3 uh, universe, uh, so that yeah. people that live outside of it um, can be familiar and you know, start using the technology. And that's the key right there. So for our audience, that was an intense 30 second elevator pitch of Galaxy and a lot to unpack here, but this is what we have the luxury of doing on Word on the Blog. Um, you know, you talk about ecosystem, you talk about all of the disruption and disintermediation and really redefining the environment in which content creators and artists and sports, you know, stars kind of live in. But let's unpack that and first say, how did we get here with you, Solo, co-founding this platform with Spencer Dinwiddie, um, who, you know, both of you really pioneered uh, the, the introduction, integration of blockchain and crypto in the NBA. So I, I kind of want to dive into that yeah. first a little bit. Um, yeah, absolutely. You come from the sports world a little bit. You were on Wall Street. You're doing your thing. And then you hooked up with Spencer Dinwiddie and yeah. then started Never a back. historical <laughs> moment in sports. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think that's a great point to start. And that's kind of the origin story of what we're building here at Galaxy. And so to start, so Spencer is actually one of my uh, brother's closest friends, if not closest friends. Um, so they're both like my older brothers in a way, but uh, sometimes they like to act like my younger brothers. But <laughs> Spencer is a very keen and very sharp guy, and he's always been a disruptor in everything he's done. And so previously, I worked at Citigroup as an investment banker in the Securitized Products Division. Um, and so we wanted to take that technology and that concept and apply it to the monetization for you know creators that sit on a bunch of intellectual property, or in Spencer's case contractual value. And so what we did is we took his MBA contract 
um, and turned it into an investment vehicle for institutional investors to invest in. And so they took um, the ability to purchase tokens and he put it on the blockchain um, and created a bond offering, which was sort of a cash advance or a way to unlock trap liquidity in an asset that would otherwise be deferred over a subsequent amount of years. So that language makes sense to Wall Street. So that's what we started with. And Spencer was the first player to tokenize himself. And Galaxy was meant to be something where you could unlock that trap liquidity. But we shortly realized after that, you know, the creator economy, social media, um, things like Cameo and Patreon, these creator platforms with them uh, um, allowing creators to monetize like gigs or things yeah. they're doing, that makes yeah. even more sense. Um, and so we wanted to create a token that was basically the access point for those things um, so we could kind of bring that type of stuff and popularize the idea of tokenization with pertains to creators. And so um, that's kind of how we started this very long journey and, uh, you know, super excited about where this space is going. And I feel like a month is a year um, oh, in this space. Tell me about it. I say, I, I constantly say we live in dog years. What happened in like the short course of an hour takes everybody else like probably a year. Uh, is what happens in this industry. We live in and exist in dog years. It's super true. But look, you're changing the game and literally and figuratively changing the game and not just for sports. Um, what I'm hearing, which is super exciting and really what I think is the promise of blockchain in of itself is allowing people for the very first time to engage directly in a global economy wherever people are in the world directly without a third party, without a middleman. Um, yeah. But it sounds like you're taking some sports concepts, um, agent concepts, uh, you know, Wall Street concepts. Uh, you're literally providing a platform, it feels like, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, allowing people to invest in the future potential earning power of the creator, the sports star, the musician, the artist. In the same way that Wall Street thinks about shares of companies, you're not actually buying or investing in the current state of the business. You're projecting what that future income at potential growth of that company is going to be. That's Wall Street thinking for the individual person or the individual content creator. Is that is that the concept? Yeah, no, absolutely. And so when you think about kind of the world and tokenization, and it's a very long journey to get to that, yeah. right? Like the, it's going to be a very long journey until the point where people are actively trading um, LGB, uh, LBJ um, for LeBron James, for example, right? Like it's going to be a long time in a process, right? If you're a rapper and you're sitting on a ton of music libraries or a music artist or something like that, and you want to go buy a luxury item, why are you taking a hard money loan? when there are far more efficient ways for you to capitalize yourself. And then on the other side of it too, when you get the fans involved in the community, you can just see how powerful, um, you know, the group is more than the single entity, right? Mm -hmm. And so the traditional venture model, you know, allows create, you know, people um, and specific centralized entities, it's a very centralized industry, um, to have outsized control about the funding growth of these ideas. But sometimes the creators or I guess the communities that they've created you know, they're the ones that have the most interest in the success of a creator, um, you know, from that perspective. And so Calixie right now, we're in the very infancy stages where, you know, we want to circle back and be that standard for people to start securitizing their contracts and music royalties and things like that. To start, we're going to focus on, you know, the lower lifted, the lower hanging fruit in terms of, you know, the communication between us and, you know, mass audiences by focusing yeah. on things like, NFTs and social engagements and buying tokens and using them for services and goods. Um, but when it comes to where we're at right now, really focusing on those social media engagements and familiar concepts, um, because at the end of the day, if you want to introduce Web3 to people who have never seen it before, you got to speak it in a language they can understand. Absolutely. I want to, I mean, I wish I was a fly on that wall in that conversation uh, with <laughs> the NBA okay. uh, when you were trying to negotiate this? Like, I mean, what was the reaction? I mean, they were probably um, sitting there <laughs> wide-eyed. Yeah, Spencer, Spencer definitely uh, ran into, he definitely, so he did get sued um, for doing that. 
Um, but in terms of, you know, defending his viewpoint and stuff like that, it really had to do with the idea of incentives um, and making sure that those were okay and, like, making sure it didn't compromise the quality of the sport. But, um, you know, that was obviously not the case. And um, through different structures, whether it was equity offerings or uh, bond offerings, it really was depending on how he could structure this sort of thing um, to get passed by them. But at the end of the day, the NBA is, you know, you've seen them push the envelope. They support their biggest supporters of, you know, obviously Top Shot. Um, you know, Roham and Dapper Labs, they are a good friend of ours as well. Um, and so we love working with some of the greatest partners in the world. And um, the NBA being one of them eventually, hopefully down the line to, in a more formal capacity, um, you know, is definitely understanding and looking for new ways to introduce technologies to make things more efficient. Um, you know, if, if you asked him during the time, he wouldn't have been that happy about it. Um, but looking back now, he, he wouldn't change his, anything he's done. Well, look, I mean, you created a case study, you created uh, a, an opportunity where there was demand and interest, and there were a lot of kind of points where people could get aligned to if there was education. You went through some of those growing pains, you went through some of those painful conversations, and out pops Galaxy, a platform yeah. that actually is a child, uh, for lack of a better term, of all of the things that you learned from that process. Mm -hmm. What do you hope to really provide uh, for the next generation or even the current generation of content creators and artists and athletes and people that for people sure. are interested in? For sure. I mean, I think for us, the number one thing is access and just control, right? When you mm -hmm. think about the world as it currently is structured, centralized entities have an outsized control over the earning potential of these creators as well as the way in which they correct they connect with their fans and we want to do away with all of that right including ourselves like galaxy as, as an ecosystem um you know really we have this broader protocol that's built that is a state that we hope to be the standard for creating non-fungible tokens nfts and social tokens galaxy is a sleeve that's built on top of it that's an application layer that doesn't really exist in web3 that makes it easy for people to use this technology um, but ultimately, we want to introduce these concepts like NFTs and tokens, because no matter what happens to you know, anybody, whether it's us, a competitor, or any sort of thing, nobody can take those tokens away from a creator um, in, or a fan, right? That value has been created. The means for being able to use them, Galaxy could be exist um, in the future. And obviously, we plan to be around for a long period of time. But if we weren't around, um, those tokens could be ported over to another application that was built on the protocol and still have value. Right, and that economy that you're creating lives outside of us, whereas everything else in the Web2 universe kind of lives within that Instagram bubble or lives within that Twitter bubble. This is really kind of just a tool to use, and sure, it could be a bubble in its own right, but you can exit or enter this bubble whenever you want, um, and that's how it should be. You should have that power or control, and you know, if you influence hundreds of millions of people or tens of millions of people or even thousands of people, right? Um, you should have, you should, it, making money should be that easy. Um, connecting your fans should be that easy. And the reason why people are kind of like, what's the catch or like, what is, you know, what, what am I really doing here? Why? It's because we've grown up in this society that's been structured in this way. So it's so foreign to think about anything else. Um, but the best technology sometimes are the ones that are disruptors um, and change the way that we think. Well, you said it, social influencers that have become social disruptors in this new technology. Coming up, I want to learn more about that. We've got the Instagram, the Twitter, what is next, the social media revolution. Who exactly is leading the charge? How does technology support that? Stay with us. After the break, could a blockchain-based social media platform reduce user distrust? It's immutable to any sort of ta tampering or any sort of foul play, right? And later, will Web 3.0 give control back to creators when Word on the Block returns? Forecast News is your gateway to all things blockchain. Breaking down and breaking through the noise with the people who know it best and why it matters. We go to where the action is, from Asia to the world. Forecast is the most reliable source of intellectual discourse and insight that informs, educates, and bridges the gap between the blockchain industry and the mainstream. The future is being built, and Forecast has it covered. This is Forecast News. Welcome back. Well, we unpacked a lot of stuff solo from your Genesis story with Spencer Dinwiddie, who's your older brother, 
friend, kind of a younger brother. You guys kind of pioneered your way through, uh, almost um, muscled your way through uh, change. And now you've formed Galaxy. And at the core of it is the social media revolution. I want to talk more about that because it really is this new age of ours in the 21st century. I mean, who knew that audience aggregators have now outpaced what standard networks or newspapers or, uh, you know, um, media organizations traditionally did. In fact, our audience aggregators have become social platforms. And now with technology, it lies in the person themselves. This is an extraordinary time for everyone. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a crazy time when you think about how we've gotten here, right? And the yeah. rise of social media and the rise of the different tools that we've had and distribution tools, right? Twitter, what it was and what it is now is, you know, completely different. And so when we think about kind of where we're going forward, um, you know, I just like to marvel at how fast we've moved and how fast technology kind of leaks its way into it. You even see the legacy platforms starting to find ways to integrate Web3 technologies into their framework. So they realize that Web2 won't exist right? Web two and a half might exist, maybe it remains to be done, like remains to be seen. But when you think about, you know, the the meta rebrand, or you're thinking about Twitter integrating and NFT support and things like that, you're really yeah. starting to see how fast the technology starts to collide. And, um, you know, we're in a very, very interesting, uh, you know, flux of change um, yeah. that's happening right now. That's happening. Right I mean, now. even if you think about legacy, right? Like, you know, once upon a time, Facebook didn't even exist. Right, like yeah. we are still part of that generation where we remember that Facebook didn't exist before, um, and yeah. now they're considered legacy. They're considered giants, uh, but yeah. you know there have also been real big disappointments and anger in this space. In 2018, right, uh, news broke out that UK-based Cambridge Analytica uh, took the data of what 50 million Facebook users. Mm -hmm. It's my information. It's your information without our explicit permission and used it to attempt to influence an election. Uh, yeah. These things are happening in the background. These experiments in this new age is happening without our permission. Yeah. What opportunity does that give blockchain and tokenization and NFTs and a new way of engaging uh, yeah. when it comes to blockchain? Yeah, I mean, I think you just, you know, that's a, that's a, that's a great question. The layup. I love it. <laughs> because uh, for us, when you think it's about a good layup. Team, You're going to slam dunk it's it. It's a great okay. layup. You know, it's good because we like that. We want to talk about it. People need to hear these things, right? Yeah, and absolutely. you think about it. The first thing I think about is transparency, right? And the idea that you don't really have to trust a trustworthy network, right? And the problem is when we live in this developed world, all of these people in these countries in the developed world, they live off the endorsement model. Right. And so my parents are actually from West Africa. And so I talk to them about this a lot, all the time. And a lot of times they're thinking about, you know, big organizations can be very different than, you know, the U.S. Right. Like we live in a society where we need to be able to point to Facebook, point to Bank of America or all of these people and be like, I trust them to use this sort of technology or be a part of this ecosystem. Right. Whereas blockchain is built on a completely different thought and concept. Right. And ethos. It doesn't really matter who's on the other side of this. I just know that it's not going to be, it's immutable to any sort of ta tampering or any sort of foul play, right? To most part, right? Obviously there are some cases, but in general, it's a far much more robust structure um, to ensure that type of stuff stays safe. Um, and so when you think about Facebook and these big entities, they're impenetrable when it comes to, you know, even security issues or in the case of being able to take your data, like they seem trustworthy and so they're not. Right. And at the end of the day, like it's a far easier, um, you're far more levered to those sort of instances when you are centralized by definition versus when things are dispersed amongst the community. And so, um, you know, you bring up a great point. It's, I think those things are going to be what makes it super important and creates that opportunity for decentralized solutions to these problems. There are also cultural moments and cultural challenges, to be sure. Right. Uh, Twitter suddenly people are losing their accounts um, for uh, various reasons and it seems yep. very centralized. And so yep. what is the pushback? And so I, I question that, you know, we saw that in OpenSea, we're starting to see that in centralized platforms, 
How do you view that at Galaxy? If you are a platform, are you going to, is it the job of the platform or is it the job of the marketplace to support it? What's, what's your view? That's such a great question. And to be quite honest, it's, it's the idea of the idea of moving towards a completely decentralized society, you know, as we continue to kind of have this conversation really is a process, right? We're not just going to wake up one day and be fully decentralized. You've got to start somewhere. Right. And so even for us internally, like, we are currently technically, you would think about us as like a more centralized solution in the decentralized space, right? But ultimately we're gonna try and find those paths and find that equilibrium so that we can you know, make the communities happy because ultimately that's what we're doing this for, right? That's what Centralized Vision has been from the start is to find a way to please the people and kind of you know, really align ourselves with the ethos of what blockchain is. In the case of Twitter and these League Legacy platforms, you know, centralization is all we knew. And that's, like I said, in the example we had before, that's how we operated as a society until something new came out, right? And they're doing their part. And so there will be a day where we're all speaking and out walking and talking, at least in my opinion, um, the same decentralized language. That decentralized language uh, is starting to be spread. Who are the social media influencers, the athletes? Who are we going to see on Galaxy? <laughs> yeah, we have a number of... Uh, um, super exciting creators. And so, um, you know, I have Ezekiel Elliott, um, star running back for the Dallas Cowboys and his teammate Amari Cooper. Um, and we actually have their celebrity chef, uh, Chef Hoppy. He's one of our favorites. Um, he's a character to say the least, but we have a lot of, you know, pro, uh, pro football players. We have NBA players, obviously Spencer um, and Dwight Howard and a couple of them as well. Um, you know, Sony Music star Tiana Taylor um, and Amon Shumpert as well. Um, and then reality TV stars as well. So actually, uh, Matt James was one of the first creators that we brought onto the platform and a number of uh, people from that reality TV family. And so to start, we were really super excited to have um, such a good start out the gates and a strong roster to begin with. Um, and that really came about from us being who we are and um, you know, being for creators by creators. <laughs> well, Solo, I think I called you guys pioneers, but pioneers are also explorers. So coming up next, what is this Web 3.0 world of ours? What is on the horizon? What's the next stage of growth? And how can regular folks participate in this new economy and a sneak peek at what NBA superstar Spencer Dinwiddie and Solo Cisse are up to coming up after this break? When we come back, can blockchain upgrade the creator economy? Forecast News is your gateway to all things blockchain. Breaking down and breaking through the noise with the people who know it best and why it matters. The future is being built and Forecast has it covered. This is Forecast News. All right, you are rejoining our conversation here at Word on the Block. I'm super excited because uh, Solo Cisse, it just sounds like a name made for Hollywood and it's uh, you've been spending some time in LA. That's where you are. It's probably why you're like super well lit and perfectly framed. Got like probably Hollywood people <laughs> yeah, right is, behind the camera is. here. I, oh, it's I got good. some good people around me. I got some good uh, people around me telling me how to do stuff. This is so new to me, but you know. <laughs> you got a good <laughs> gotta, team. Gotta you got a good team. Get in where okay, you what in. is this? You got you got a new show coming up. Uh, I heard about it. I already heard about it. Uh, I already heard about like the super interesting technology in this COVID world of ours, how you are really kind of taking us to far flung places right in the comfort of our living room. So um, do you tell us about this this show coming up on Coindesk TV and Spotify? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, absolutely. So we're super excited to announce uh, New Money with Spencer and Solo. It's a video podcast TV talk show um, on Spotify's new video platform streaming service. Um, so they're going to be having a lot more video content. And so we're one of the first programs um, to be on there. So we're super excited about that. Um, it was Coindesk produced. Um, and so they did a great job putting together a program where we sit down um, with a lot of different industry leaders, thought leaders, celebrities, athletes, influencers in their spaces and talk about um, the ways in which they're connecting with their fans, the way they're monetizing themselves, how the current legacy world is centralized and the downfalls of that. Ultimately, there isn't much like this on the market. Um, and so we're super excited to say that it went out uh, January 12th um, for the first episode available on Coindesk TV um, and Spotify. And, um, got to say that it was a fun production to put forward, and um, we have some great guests coming on the show this season. Well, you know, look, you guys are 
redefining almost the economic relationship uh, really between a sports franchise, an entire universe, right? A, a multi-billion dollar business that is global uh, with the core creators of value for that sport, which is the athlete. And now you're translating it for other people in other industries. Where do you see media, um, social media, engagement with audience, engagement with fans going? Yeah, I mean, I think that's a good question. I think through things like the show, we talk about it. We want to talk about kind of where things are going and we want to make sure that we have a very safe space to have these conversations or I guess a space where we could start having them, right? Because there isn't really, you go on crypto Twitter and it's super bespoke and it's super intimidating to somebody that wants to learn about the space. And so I think the way we do this as a group is more people got to enter the conversation. How do you get more people to enter the conversation? Well, you got to speak the languages that they're comfortable speaking, right? And so when I think about kind of the future of social media and, you know, community building and stuff like that through a decentralized framework, I think you create a world where you're incentivizing people to participate, learning how big the communities can be. And so I think the power of social media is going to be in the future um, is being able to create those tools for the creators and um, community managers and things like that to be able to have those more efficient conversations um, and allow people to feel like they're gaining even more from being a part of them. It's so empowering because it's almost reversing the process. I'm curious if Spencer still has his sports agent. Oh, <laughs> no, he, like, he, he definitely does. Like we love, we love, uh, we love Goo that, um, that he has, he has a few of them, but um, you know, Spencer definitely, you know, he sees the value, right? And I think it's more about how can we all fit into this decentralized world, not necessarily cutting out, um, you know, some of those things. And so I think it's really about finding that fair trade-off, right? When you're thinking about, you know, blockchains and how we even built Galaxy, right? Like we're built on a blockchain alternative called Hedera Hashgraph. Um, and Hedera, Hedera Hashgraph, you know, has been a great supporter of us um, and stuff like that. And so when you think about that type of world, it's really about find, getting in where you fit in and finding the right mix of everything, right? Is it completely decentralized? Is it somewhat centralized? Is it entirely centralized? Where on the spectrum do we live? Because all of this is a spectrum um, across the board for everything. What should be, you know, operating differently? How conscious was that decision to pick a private blockchain, which is Hedera, versus a public decentralized blockchain like a Bitcoin or an Ethereum? Yeah, I mean, I think for us, the reason why we picked them is just because they were great partners for us. Um, and, you know, those, you know, being able to align ourselves um, with the companies like, you know, Google, IBM, LG, Deutsche Telekom um, was a great value for us. And we would like want to be one of those companies on the council one day. Like that would be a great dream come true for us. And so um, we needed that. And then also just from its merits individually, right? Like we needed something that was high throughput. Um, and because, you know, we've seen things like, um, you know, what happened with CryptoKitties on the Ethereum network and things like mm -hmm. that. We realized that something like commerce or something like Galaxy that has uh, potential to be, you know, high transactions. Um, but Hedera has been great for us. And finally, the metaverse. What's the role of the metaverse for Galaxy, for creators, for Web 3.0, in your view? <clears throat> That's a great question. I mean, the metaverse, that is a, that is one that I feel like everyone is talking about right now. And yeah. I think there's hundreds of takes on it. Um, I think for me personally, when it comes to, you know, starting, I think it's an easier way for us to start accessing and using Web3 technologies. And honestly, the metaverse isn't something that's new, or at least the concept of moving towards something like it isn't, right? Like you think about the world we live in and the prominence that we put on, uh, or the, you know, the emphasis that we put on online presences, um, you know, social media, you know, gaming online, we've been heading towards the metaverse for the last two decades, um, right? And so I think that's something that's super um, important to keep in mind. And then also, I think in general, it's about collaboration and community. I think that's really what it is. Yeah. At the end of the day, is integration and access points and ease. I'm a convenience and Zoom University or, you know, given COVID, um, you know, we've, we've already been operating in some sort of metaverse, yeah. right? And so like, I think those concepts in the world is, you know, over time in the last, you know, for the history of man, the basis between the value we put on tangible things and intangible things has been compressing since forever, right? And so like, you're thinking about NFTs coming, you're thinking about COVID and like the pandemic and we're operating in this virtual world a lot more. Um, they're all signals and things that definitely put some uh, power behind the wind sails of 
you know, the metaverse movement. Um, and then as pertains to Galaxy, it's definitely something we're looking to explore. And um, we want to make sure that we're that open social marketplace where, you know, all different types of activities and, uh, you know, collaboration can be fostered. Well, thanks for hanging out with us on our forecast metaverse right here with our audience and with our collective <laughs> industry. So let's see, say COO and co-founder of Galaxy with, uh, you know, your guy, Spencer Dinwiddie, and, and just uh, taking names and going places. <laughs> we appreciate it. Appreciate you for having me. Absolutely. And thank you, everyone, for joining us on this metaverse that we call Word on the Block. I'm Angie Lau, Editor-in-Chief of Forecast News. Until the next time.